we care because regardless of whether we're teaching mathematics or biology or in my case philosophy, particularly ethics, we have this responsibility to create responsible citizens, ethical people that go out into the world knowing universal values. It's very rare to justify it for academic dishonesty because it's mostly one individual trying to pretend like they know something, stealing somebody else's words or ideas. I think it's really important to um, just integrate those ethical codes and ethical standards that we that we want for our children, that we expect for our children, that we model them in ourselves. And so I think it's a foundation of what, what we do as a profession and who we are as a person. And especially in a K through 12 setting, if teachers aren't putting the focus on academic dishonesty, they're really setting their students up for failure when it comes to their higher education because it is something that is taken very seriously at an institutional level. There's three main types um, specifically that we focus on. Um, that'd be plagiarism, so utilizing someone else's work um, and calling it your own. Collusion, which is collaboration that is not sanctioned by your professor or teacher. And then there's cheating, which is any sort of action that would um, give you an unfair advantage on an assignment or an exam um, or something academically based. You can understand it by realizing that a lot of students do it unknowingly. So they don't really understand that what they are doing is wrong. I encounter that many times when I'm grading papers or where, um, where I see certain discussions and I'm a bit suspicious about the wording, words that a 16-year-old or a 20-year-old are not typically um, going to use. So many times it's unintentional but I'm not always fooled. Many times it's also students just being lazy, uh, students thinking it's easy. Unintentional plagiarism really is, uh, comes from a place of lack of knowledge or understanding when it comes to, first of all, what plagiarism is. Um, and we see a lot of students, unfortunately, thinking that they can change a few words in a paragraph or in a sentence that they found that relates to their project. And be like, oh, I'm not plagiarizing, I changed some words. Not understanding proper citation or using um, a citation method that your professor didn't ask for. So they might ask for APA and you used MLA. That would be unintentional. You know, you have to say, but you didn't use the proper format. A lot of this is going to depend on what is what is the type of academic dishonesty. Are they cheating on an exam right in front of you? Um, did you notice that they plagiarized on a paper? Or you know that they're working with a group when they shouldn't be? A lot of institutions um, send their classic dishonesty cases to a conduct office like I work for. So then we are the decision makers based on the information we have of whether the student is found responsible or not. It will affect them either with their grade, either with the entire semester, and in many cases legally. So I think we need to be a little bit more severe and clear with the expectations, but also letting students know that this is what is acceptable, this is what is not. It could have really bad uh, academic consequences like you being suspended in my classes, failing without any other question. In these kinds of situations, you want to always adhere to those kinds of um, policies that are put into place. But when you're just talking with a student and you have maybe a suspicion that something is off or you're not quite sure, I think it would come down to just you know going back to the relationship that you've created with that student. I mean, I think sometimes we forget, we jump to the problem, um, what's going on, but there's more to a situation than what we see, see right in front of us. 